Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in our Ultimate Base 3.0. In the previous episode I believe we have finally hooked up the oil reservoirs and one thing I noticed is we cannot ship enough water to crew deal. If we are only using the interplanetary launcher, we have to pay quite a bit of rap bolts to only send 200 kilograms, which will be used up quite quickly with four oil wells. Since we disabled the teleporters, the only other option we have to do this on a regular basis is to set up an actual spaceship. I think we can spare one duplicate. We were training Ellie to do just that. I think Ellie is gonna spend the rest of her life in a rocket shipping water over to crew deal. Now if I have a look inside of this, we don't really need two beds, it's gonna be a single person thing. We might want to keep a storage bin and maybe we want to have a better solution for the oxygen rather than the algae we have left here. So I was kind of thinking I want to disable the system here, take it apart completely, we will take what we learned from it, so I'm still gonna rebuild it but in a slightly more efficient way and we're gonna do that all the way over here. Replacing our current launcher system here as well as the rocket. If I have a look at Crudel, how much water? We only have 520 kilograms left. I disabled the oil well so it doesn't get eaten up but we still need it to produce the oxygen. So we might not even be quick enough to actually do this. You know, I might not even change much on the rocket design. We can always use these storage bins to actually gain some materials that we desperately need such as iron and then this is just a backup here. The morale is going to be pretty good and we also have 15 kilograms of berry sludge here. Maybe let's up that to 30. No, that's too exaggerated. Let's go to 20. And then we can take the gas output fitting and maybe set it up right there. This is then going to allow us to draw more oxygen from any gas storage we have attached to this rocket. I also already got a liquid tank attached. Maybe on top of that I want to add my oxygen tank. So a gas cargo canister goes right there. We still have the space for more. Before we disassemble this, I think I'm just gonna send the rocket up in space and then I'm gonna land it back somewhere else. So we have the space to take it apart and move the system. Or actually thinking about it, we can send it to crew deal with the first load of water. Still, we wanna go ahead and fill this up with oxygen. The same thing counts for the module itself. And then we also need to add a liquid port loader right next to the first one to add the water itself. Considering we want to make as few trips as possible, maybe we're just gonna have two liquid canisters. Uh, let me move the gas cargo canister all the way up so we have the two liquid tanks together. Liquid port loader will be installed here and we can hook it up to water like so. As for the liquid cargo tanks, I would like to see water, of course. And the gas cargo canister is going to be dedicated to oxygen. If I make the rocket just a little bit higher, these pipes are going to connect. Maybe we'll be able to pick up an artifact module. Uh, let me maybe add that at the top right there. And it is literally the only thing we can still fit. So let's do it. Okay, looks like the water is being delivered. Nice. How is it looking with the gases? Not quite keeping up. I suspect this is still going to take a while. This is fine, it's gonna allow us to send over a little bit more water to crew deal, but it still means I cannot take it apart immediately. Let's see, did our situation improve? Yes, slightly. Okay, we now are gaining water if we only use it to produce oxygen. So maybe in the meantime we can think about pumping some gases away. I would like to clean this up not only in terms of debris on the floor, but also the gases. So I'm gonna set up a bunch of pumps. So let me actually see. Gases. How far is the hydrogen? It's all the way up here, but I suspect, yes indeed, it is at a very high pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a gas pump here at the lowest point. Let's maybe do it over there. And what I want to do is link it directly to our waste gases. I know there are no such things as waste gases, but this is the pipe that leads directly into space. We're gonna hook this directly up to the main grid, but we're also gonna give it some automation. So as soon as we detect something, where is it? Gas element sensor. Let's make sure this is quite high up, maybe, hmm, maybe right there. So if we actually detect the hydrogen at this point, then we want to stop pumping. And that is gonna be the first phase in our cleanup process. However, we also want to go ahead and pump out the carbon dioxide here, at least quite a bit of it. 
So I would like to set up another pump. Hmm, let's maybe do it here and then maybe one more right there. Let's also hook these guys up to power. What, what are I doing? And of course we need some pipes to hook up to the waste pipe. And these guys really, I think they can just keep on running until I decide otherwise. And there they are, my duplicants already building everything. As for crude oil, we need to take care of three gases, the natural gas, the carbon dioxide and potentially some polluted oxygen. If I can, I will prevent the polluted oxygen from ever turning up, but we might not be able to. So my goal is basically I would like to have a division maybe at this point and right here I'm going to collect some waste liquids. For instance if we use natural gas generators they will produce some polluted that would then drop down here. At the same time if we store oil up to this level that means the carbon dioxide will be pushed up here as well and if we leave just a little bit free here then maybe all the carbon dioxide will be able to store here and pump up or actually maybe use for slicksters in this room. So I will be leaving this space free to let the air flow freely and then the oil is gonna stop at this point and not swap over, hopefully. The natural gas generator takes 90 grams of natural gas per second. How much do we produce with the oil well? Hmm, I cannot really tell, but I would suspect not quite as much. Let's assume two natural gas generators is all it takes. Now, how low do I want to place those? I might want some pumps or liquid reservoirs here at the bottom. I'm gonna leave four spaces free, then another floor, and then we would have the two generators. Yeah, and I have just enough steel left to actually do that. I think that's gonna be good. And of course, we want to set them up on cobalt mesh tiles. Until I actually made my initial pumping here, I would like to make sure the liquid can still reach us. So I'm gonna leave this open as well. For now I'm gonna build this pump out of cobalt, but this will also have to change. And then we have to decide which liquids we actually want to keep. For instance, it would be nice to keep the water, though there's not much left. Yeah, but honestly, everything else I'm just gonna dump here on the top, I think, and whatever survives, survives. So I'm gonna take some pipes and bring them directly up. Maybe at this point we want to sort them out with a liquid filter. If it is water, we just want to bring it over and hook up to this guy. If it is something else, we're gonna continue up, make sure we can actually build this. And now I just have to build a temporary pipe system all the way to the surface. And I guess we could do that right here. Mm, let's maybe go up a little bit more, though I don't want to flood this thing. Yeah, it might be the better idea to somehow dump it over there and then make a little division wall. Uh, actually, we want to be able to go up there. Uh, I guess that's going to be good. No, actually, that's not going to be good. So let's bring this over even more. And now I can do something like this. Good enough. The loading of the oxygen does take a while, but I suspect it's also gonna keep us alive for a bit. In the meantime, on crew deal, I cleaned up some more and we are now also actively pumping out the water. It is being processed here in the first oil well and the rest we just dump either here for the oil or on the top for the other liquids. At this point, I think we are ready to just go ahead and launch the rocket for the first time. I think we're gonna have enough at least for this trip here. The interiors also all cleaned up and I made sure this is provided with power. Now I would like this rocket to not be grounded anymore because Ellie is gonna now live in it and we are gonna change the destination and at this point we can acknowledge the warnings and begin the launch sequence. There we go, launching the rocket. Wonderful, let's make sure Ellie loses the suit. And then before she lands, we are gonna equip it again. Now, there might be a problem here with the suit running out of oxygen. So maybe instead of the two storages, we could also have a dock. Yeah, might be worth considering. We now once again have a full liquid reservoir here, so we can probably take things apart and we don't need this system here anymore. Yeah, I think we are gonna be slightly wasteful, but we now know how the system works and we will be able to build it much better. But for now, I think I just want to access everything and then we are just going to take things apart. This also means we don't need the phosphorite line anymore. This will be moved to the right side of the base. And if we're lucky, we can take apart the background buildings in one big swoop. 
On crew deal, I already prepared 4 liquid reservoirs. We're gonna take this as a buffer and an indication when we need to send another rocket, because we kind of want to automate the process, of course. Previously, I used this transmitter here in order to determine that, but considering we cannot really do it with the payloads because it takes so much, we are gonna do it with rockets instead. So this is gonna have to move probably. By the way, I'm so unhappy with the base at the moment that I'm probably gonna move it over here in the future, make a more ultimate version, but for now I just want everything to work and I want access to oil. So we're gonna build the prototype here. Basically all we have to do is daisy chain the liquids and then use the output here of the last reservoir to send the signal. It will send the signal when the reservoir is less than low threshold, which is perfect, so if we set the high threshold to 100% and the low one to, let's say, 90%, then as soon as this one here is being used up to 90%, we are gonna send the signal to launch the rocket. So that's gonna be fairly easy, just do that. Because we send this signal currently to a specific rocket, we don't need to make it into a pulse, it can remain green and it's just gonna send one rocket either way. We should also already do the piping, daisy chain this and then this is gonna move over and down. Something else I would like to do is make the main storage here available from the outside. I think Liam can profit from that and looking at the liquids we might just be able to do that, though I don't want him to be able to enter the base this way. What happens if we take these two tiles out? Then he cannot enter but he might be able to grab the items. There is the broadcaster. I think I'm just gonna copy the settings here. It's just the name. Actually, that didn't do anything. So we're gonna name it ourselves, Crew Deal Water, and we are gonna deconstruct this. Ah, look at that. That is exactly what I wanted to see. By the way, I printed a bunch of larva eggs just to try out the slicksters here with the carbon dioxide. I wanna test out a few things. Maybe it's worth actually keeping them. Also, we've made some nice progress here with the gases. Let's see, where is the hydrogen at? Ah, still at a high pressure. I guess we just have to be a little bit patient there. When Ellie arrives at crew deal, I also wanna make sure she picks up some lead. And what else do we want? Maybe a little bit more iron would be great to craft the steel. Ellie is going to arrive shortly and now we can also see the cargo capacity is being used up. AKA the oxygen is now slowly dropping down. So the good news is this is working. The bad news is it's not gonna last as long as I anticipated. Oh, there we go. We're entering the atmosphere. Let's see that happen right here and hopefully we'll be lucky enough to actually get out of here. Ooh, no. Well, either way, let's make sure Ellie is equipping the Atmo suit. And then I'm not sure. Let's see if she actually exits. Oh, okay, she can exit. Nice. Now we need a liquid rocket port unloader. Let's place that right there. And we want to make sure this links to our liquid reservoirs. We also need to power this one up. Let's see, we can have a heavy chime plate here, probably. Oh nice, because we have some entertainment here, Ellie is actually using the base, meaning she is exchanging her Atmo suit. This is perfect. <gasps> Wait, this requires line of sight. That's the entire reason I left this space open here. So I guess I have to build it back here and just extend the cabling. <laughs> no worries. With all that out of the way, we're ready to set up the new platform and it's gonna go right there. Do I want to leave space free? I think a little bit, so we can set up ladders. I definitely want some ladders on either side. No, actually that's stupid. We don't want ladders on either side. We want port loaders on one side. We want to load some water and we also want to load gases. And after that we can add the rocket platform and that means we're only gonna have one set of ladders on the right side. And I wanna make these obsidian so they don't melt. There's our liquid rocket port unloader and of course we want our precious water. Thank you. Liam is eagerly building the pipes. Ah, et voila! Finally we are starting to pump out the water. It's gonna be saved in those four tanks and provided we don't use it up immediately, we can send out the signal. This here sends a green signal when the rocket is ready for flight. Okay, let's see why it wouldn't be ready right now. Because we don't have a destination, because the cargo transfer isn't completed and because the crew isn't on board. 
So that is good, because as soon as Ellie is on board, we could then go ahead and start the ship, because it waits for the cargo transfer to be completed, and it detects that with the liquid rocket port unloader. So all we would have to do the next time we launch the rocket from the main planetoid is make sure it is a round trip. If I see this correctly, technically all we need is a cable going from here to here, because if the rocket is ready, we want to launch it. And there is currently no other condition, because it is that simple. At least in my dreams, we'll see how it turns out. I'm already gonna go ahead and set the destination back to home, and actually at home we want to make sure we build this rocket platform. Yeah, it is set up, that's good, so let's take this one out. We don't want to accidentally land over there. Oh no, are we actually also waiting for the rocket to be fueled? I mean, we should have enough for the trip, right? So that could be a problem. Maybe it's not as simple. Maybe we have to detect when we don't extract the water anymore. And by the way, we will still be able to use the payload opener because there are other things we need to send in due time. For instance, the berry sludge. Whenever that runs out, we can send a signal over. So it will still have its uses. The water was just overwhelming, with an oil well using up one kilogram per second. While we're waiting, there are already some other things we can take care of on the main planetoid. For instance, I would like to move the carbon dioxide pipe to the right. And this is gonna allow me to add another pipe for the oxygen. So right here, I'm actually gonna split these pipes up. This one here I'm making is just gonna be temporary, but the lower pipe could now also go up and that would then be exclusively oxygen. And of course it's coming from a system that has been running reliably for a thousand cycles or so. So we run this pipe up instead. This is gonna be our access to oxygen. And this is also gonna allow us to run these pipes a little bit niftier. We are gonna make sure that the hydrogen is going to the right side and then we can also pump out some oxygen and bring it to several places. But first and foremost, it's gonna go to the rocketry program, but we can do that in another episode. Today, it was just important to figure out how this is gonna work with the rocket. We are almost done pumping this out and then we'll see whether or not this is sending a green signal, but I highly doubt it. We probably have to just detect whether or not we are pumping the water. But this is essentially gonna be it. I wanna make sure that this rocket here goes all on its own, together with Ellie, of course. And it should just fly back to the main planetoid in order to refuel. Also fill up the gas canisters and the liquid cargo tanks. And then depending on the signals and needs we have for this planetoid, it is going to launch the rocket again. So now all the liquid is out and the signal is not green because we haven't got the rocket fueled. But I don't want to do it on this planetoid because we have enough fuel to make it back. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we can just have a liquid pipe element sensor here. And then together with this signal that will detect when the rocket has actually landed. Hopefully it is not gonna relaunch the rocket immediately, but we'll have to figure that out. So we can just add an AND gate here. Let's see, uh, probably... Mm, let's do it here. Actually, let me turn this around a little bit. Now we can easier reach it. Let's make sure we go to this guy and that guy and then this guy and we can remove these cables. So now we're going to activate it if there is a rocket and we don't detect the liquid. So hopefully as soon as it lands it is going to spill the liquid and therefore it's going to send a red signal. Worst case scenario it's going to land and immediately start again but hopefully it doesn't do that. Hold on, I forgot a not gate here because we don't want to detect the liquid. That's what I'm talking about. Now we send the signal to launch the rocket. So as soon as Ellie enters the rocket, it should go. So for some reason, Ellie doesn't want to enter the module. What happens if I set this to crew? But that isn't really the intention. Or should she just live in the module? Okay, we might have to try this another time the next time with the round trip feature, but right now it just doesn't automatically start without being fueled up. So I guess I'm gonna launch this bad boy myself and then the next time we can figure out how this exactly works. There we go. Now we have plenty of water again and we can probably run our oil wells. As soon as we run out of water, we're gonna send another signal and hopefully we'll be able to launch the rocket there. 
But yeah, with that out of the way, I would say we're gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching, have a great time, and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.